It was on the 22nd of April 1994 that Arno Funke's career as a dangerous criminal finally came to an end, but not before he'd become something of a folk hero in Germany. Although, in retrospect, he could have wished for a cooler alias. This is the story of Dagobert. He first came to the attention of the police and the public in May 1988, when West Berlin's premier department store Kaufhaus des Westens received a phone call from East Berlin. A bomb, time to go off at night, had been planted in the store, and the as yet unidentified extortionist was demanding half a million Deutschmarks, which is the equivalent in today's money of about 540,000 euros. Phoning from East Berlin was a great way of making things a lot more difficult for the authorities. At the time, it was actually quite simple to get a visa to just visit East Berlin for the day. In the event, the bomb failed to go off, but a few days later another one was planted, and this one worked, causing an estimated 250,000 marks worth of damage. The company decided to pay up, and so following instructions, the money was thrown from a moving S-Bahn train at a specific place. And for the next four years, that was it. Somebody had successfully extorted a significant amount of money from a luxury department store, but the identity of this person remained a mystery, and the case was unsolved. It was, in fact, Arno Funke, an artist who specialised in painting cars. This is one of his designs. At the time, he needed some cash to kickstart a new business. Later medical examinations also suggested that fumes from the paints that he used in his job had caused minor brain damage that contributed to his already depressed state to the point that he became almost suicidal. By 1992, he had spent all of his money, and so decided to resort once again to extortion. This time he would target the Karstadt department store chain, but otherwise the basic plan was the same. Also, of course, by this time Germany had reunified, and so the trick of phoning from East Berlin would no longer work. Instead, he would call from a random public payphone and play a recording of a synthesised computer voice. He demanded a million marks, and instructed the company to signal their agreement by placing a small ad in a newspaper with a coded message. According to a later interview, he was looking at the bag that he was going to use for the money, and it had a picture of Scrooge McDuck on it, who in the German translation is for some reason known as Dagobert. And so he decided that the message would be, Uncle Dagobert grüßt seinen Neffen. On seeing this, he would phone with further instructions, introducing himself as Dagobert and apologising for the extortion. And so he became known to everybody as Dagobert. One night, a bomb exploded in the porcelain department of a store in Hamburg, causing a lot of damage but injuring nobody. And Dagobert organised a complicated handover. The money was to be placed in a special device that he had built and then attached to the outside of a specific train. The device included a timer that would release the container at a specific time for Dagobert to then pick up. Now, in those days, trains were a bit more reliable than they are now, and so officers were able to work out from how the timer was set where it would be. So they stuffed the container with worthless pieces of paper and stationed officers along the track at the designated place. However, the timer was actually a red herring. The real release mechanism was radio controlled and Dagobert was waiting in a completely different place. So the police waited in vain as the extortionist made off with, well, as it turned out, some paper. Dagobert's response was more bombs in more stores. One was an incendiary bomb that caused most of its damage by setting off the sprinklers. Another was a bomb that detonated inside a lift during opening hours. Now, according to some sources, two people were slightly injured, but according to others, nobody was injured at all. Further attempts to either deliver the money or catch Dagobert were made and failed. In one very celebrated incident, he was almost caught, but the officer slipped on the wet ground grass, and Dagobert cycled away while the police in their cars got stuck in traffic. News reports said that the officer slipped on uh, dog feces, but this detail, while funny, is actually untrue. 
And so began a cat and mouse game that lasted nearly two years. Karstadt stores in several cities were attacked and Dagobert came up with a whole range of ingenious contraptions and tricks. He continued to evade capture, but he also never got his money. On the rare occasion that an attempt was made with real money, the handover failed for some other reason. The most famous incident was when instructions were given to place the cash in a specific grit box. Sensing an easy arrest, police put a bag in the box and lay in wait. When, after a very long time, nothing had happened, they went to retrieve the bag, only to discover that Dagobert had been hiding in a trench that he'd previously dug under the box, which he had fitted with a false bottom. In 1993, he increased his demand to 1.4 million marks, but still had no success. Meanwhile, the German public was absolutely delighted with this legendary but mysterious genius who was outwitting the police at every turn. The police, for their part, were rather more worried that eventually somebody would get seriously hurt or even killed, and so threw everything they had at the case. A special unit was set up that even had its own badge, and at one point, had officers watching 3,000 payphones all over Berlin, only for Dagobert to then completely by chance choose a phone that wasn't being watched. On the 19th of April 1994, however, he and his car were spotted at the scene of another failed handover, and this allowed him to be positively identified as Arno Funke. Three days later, on the 22nd of April, he was finally arrested, attempting to phone through more instructions. He was eventually sentenced to nine years, of which he served a little over five. While in prison, he was found to have an IQ of around 120, which surprised absolutely nobody, and was also contacted by the satirical magazine Eulenspiegel, who asked if, as somebody with artistic talent, he might be interested in a job as a caricaturist. And so, now in a steady job, because after all there will always be a demand for biting satire, he's left his life of crime and even become something of a minor celebrity, occasionally writing books and even appearing on reality TV shows. It's a good end to this particular story. I mean, we should bear in mind that it was only by pure luck that nobody was seriously hurt, but they weren't. And for a few years, all of Germany was being thoroughly entertained by a criminal mastermind straight out of a comic book. The message would be Uncle Dagle, Dagle, da, Dagle, Dagle, Dingle, Dangle, Dongle. Uncle Dagle, Dagle, oh! Come on, Andrew, you can speak German, and apologising for the exhaustion. For the... Uh